Today we're in beautiful Sedona, Arizona, reviewing the Starling Roost. This is the Starling Roost, a stainless steel mullet. As Starling says, do it all bike. Let's go see what it rides like. I've been wanting to ride this for months, but my health hasn't been up to it. I'm still pretty sick. Oh boy. Thank you, it's just me. But today I felt well enough to ride, so I grabbed the Starling Roost to do a quick review. Ooh, I like this thing. It is zippy. Wow, I'm surprised. It wants to kind of accelerate everywhere. Was not expecting that. Starling said they didn't want just an enduro bike or just an XC bike. They kind of wanted this to be their hardtail that they grab for whatever. Most people are looking for a do-it-all. They can handle a bike packing adventure, flow trails, jump trails, maybe even an enduro race. I think Starling hears you. Wow, this thing is peppy. I was not expecting that in the slightest. It's always fun riding a UK hardtail. Very seldom do I get a boring vanilla UK hardtail. They always have so much personality. Oh, this bike is fantastic. Let me take it on a little more terrain to explain what I'm feeling. It doesn't feel slow like most mullets do. Most mullets feel less efficient than 29, 29. And we don't have fast dirt conditions. It just rained an hour ago. So if anything, it should be draggier, but man, this thing begs you to sprint Put a little more power in impressive now you're not going to mistake it for a turner nitrous or a spot rocker or a super lightweight precise xc trail bike but again it's not really supposed to be that but i'm surprised how well it covers that terrain especially with a 63 and a half head angle hello Oh, thank you, it's just me. Have a great afternoon. Wow, seated position's really modern, I like it. Nice steep seat tube, so you're able to weight the front on climb so the front doesn't lift. A lot of people that ride flat terrain don't love steep seat tubes. Oh, you can really feel the low bottom bracket in the corners. This thing corners like a dream. Oh, man, the mullet kind of makes the slack head angle corner a little better for some reason. They dive into corners. I've always felt that on mullets and it's so fun. I'm very impressed with how eager this is to attack technical climbs when you sprint at them. For more info on this bike, go watch my first look video. I weigh it, I measure all the geo. Really important to understand if you're considering one of these. All right, let's try this 18 inch ledge in the middle of the trail. Kind of sprint toward it. Pedal wheelie up. Oh, no problem. Wow. This thing's cool. Really likes technical climbs. Real easy to loft that front wheel when you need to. This bike's not hard to ride, but if you're an advanced rider and you can lift tires and bunny hop and track stand, it's really going to reward you. Wow, what a bike. I've ridden over 100 modern hardtails now. If you ever want to pick my brain and get my personalized advice for which hardtail is right for you, I do that over on Patreon. Patreon.com slash hardtail party. I'd be happy to help you over there. I do hardtail consultation as well as full suspension. It has a nice stiff power delivery. Let's see how compliant it is. I've got my Spinergy MXX wheels that are nice and compliant. I run them on a lot of my personal bikes so I know just how they feel. So I can tell if this frame is stiff or not. It's definitely stiff under acceleration in a good way. 
Let's see if it beats me up on the downs. A little bit stiff there. Oh, this thing wants to jump. Yeah, it's stiff. Holy cow, though. I forgot when you bunny hop a mullet, you have to do your timing a little different. Oh, this thing's a little charger. What cable rattle am I getting? Must be rear brake. Everything else I've got is wireless. That's a fairly stiff ride, but if you're on flow trail or somewhere not in the southwest like this, it'll probably be okay. Let's see. Wow. Howdy. Thank you. Man, right up those two foot ledges like they were nothing. And I'm out of shape. I haven't been on a bike in months. So cool. These elevated chainstays are a hot topic online. But when you ride it, you don't notice it. And when the, the chain ring's covering it, it looks like a normal hardtail anyway. I love what they've done. It allows you to run bigger chain ring, bigger tires, and keep the chain stays short. A lot of us wish bikes looked great without thinking about the dynamic ride quality that that would make. I'm getting some noise of the brake cable hitting. I think that's where it's hitting. Or maybe it's the chain. Could be chain on the elevated chain stay. What a stunning Starling. This thing's fun. We got a little bit of flowy downhill. Then we'll take it on some steep stuff, see how it does. So you'll often hear me talk about how geometry is far more than one number. I'm glad that people are paying attention to geo charts, especially when buying a bike you've never no. ridden. However, sometimes we latch onto one number like head angle. That's the favorite number for people to latch onto right now. So if you judge this bike just on its head angle, you'd really be doing it a disservice. And any bike really, but especially this bike. This bike is so much more than one or two numbers. It's a complete package of all those geometry numbers. And you can tell Starling's been making interesting bikes for years and they're not afraid to challenge the status quo. Oh, <laughs> that is fun. It's got some BMX flavor to it. Reminds me a lot of the Santa Cruz Chameleon, but it's a little more livable as a day-to-day -day bike. A little more zippy, a little more fun. Better climber, I feel. More stable cornering. Now we're on a steep, rocky, rubbly climb that maxes out your heart rate. We're just gonna put in Eagle for a sec and pretend we're in Marin County, riding up steep fire roads. This will do it, comfortable fire road position. It doesn't feel huge, has a tall stack, which I'm instantly in love with, instantly at home. That means the handlebars are high up and you're not hunched over. Once again, Geo's more than one or two numbers that tall stack makes a lot of bikes want a wheelie when climbing because there's less weight on your bars. But they've combated that with the steeper seat angle and a lower bottom bracket. That helps the front stay down. Oh, I hate seeing trails brave like that, especially by mountain bikers. If this trail's too hard for you to clean, like me right now, don't go around and make a new trail. Stay on the trail, please. That go around just made a hard trail easy. And trails have ratings for a reason. Let's keep them that way. Don't go around hard obstacles, please. We're seeing so much of that in Sedona right now. Our single track is not single anymore. Breaks my heart. And it doesn't help trail relations with other trail users. And it's not just mountain bikers. Plenty of hikers are adding additional go arounds too. But stay on the trail. Don't make it wider. Don't make it easier. Don't stack rocks. If the trail's over your ability, go ride something a little easier or walk it. Right here, same thing. 
no reason for a parallel trail to exist. Breaks my heart. Oh, my fitness is not what it used to be. So I'm having to walk a couple sections that I didn't used to have to. Hopefully one day I'll be healthy enough to ride those again. I'm just so grateful for any day on the bike is a good day. So grateful to be pedaling right now and not be laying up in bed resting. Shout out to all my amazing patrons. You guys are amazing. Hello. Come on through. Yep. Yeah, you guys have the right of way. You don't even have to hurry. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy your hike. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Come on through. No, you're good. I'll wait for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Good trail relations is key to keeping trails open in high tourist areas like Sedona. This thing is a delightful climber, especially on punchy moves. My timing's not dialed for bunny hops and even manuals. The most mullets have a much higher bottom bracket, so they feel a little more BMXy in how they initiate manuals, but they don't feel as planted in corners as this. And I really like this. This is still very easy to manual with that short stay, but wow, that low bottom bracket gives you so much confidence. Before we drop in, let's take a moment to savor this amazing view. Oh, nature's amazing. We need to protect it, take care of it, because she sure takes care of us. My goodness, what a day. Special moment right now. So grateful to be back on a bike. Hopefully I can keep this up at least an hour of riding a week would be awesome. All right, this is Black Diamond, very steep. Tight turns. I really like mullets on this stuff. You just feel like that back wheel's right there with you. And the bike will just tuck in and turn and lean when you need it to. This is a big move. This thing's really an aggressive all-rounder is what I'm going to call it. Like, it doesn't need black diamonds to be fun. So confident on this thing. This is a stiff frame though. Not a supple little XC trail machine. Not stiff like a common saw or a canyon stoic but it's still pretty stiff for steel but that makes for a precise bike and for charging hard i don't charge super hard anymore i'm kind of a mellow trail rider now those days i think are behind me we'll see oh i held on to it that's a tough move and normally i mentally give up halfway but i stuck to it and the bike responded well Really good slow speed balance, really good trousy technical balance through there, and that power delivery, I'm very impressed. All right, now let's go see how she does on some flow. Oh, hello, thank you. Have a great day. This thing dives into corners. Oh, manual so well. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. Come on up. Sorry to startle you. You had to stop, didn't you? No, I'm watching you. It's okay. It's he's a mountain biker too, so we usually part of living here is watching out for hikers and not running them over. Well, Let's see how she wheelies. I haven't tried wheelies yet. Oh, oh, that wheelies so well. Okay, I gotta find a straighter spot for that. It does manual quite well. Really, really sweet balance. Short stay, low BB, tall stack, slack head angle, not too long reach. Makes this thing handle so well. So a lot of slack head angle bikes don't like to change direction very well. They kind of want to stay straight and planted and stable. Woo! 
Oh man, <laughs> I'd get in trouble if this was my bike. This thing is so fun. Definitely has chameleon vibes to it, but a little more boutique, high quality feeling. A little bit of that chain slap. Squash that 24 inch hole. Oh man, this thing wants the manual. You have to lift the front a little bit higher than some bikes to get it started. Yeah, I need a, a chain, like a little protection on my chain today. That's my bad. That's not cable rattle, that's chain slap. Oh man, what a bike. This thing's special. Reminds me a lot of my Titanium Maniac I designed, my signature bike. But mullet, a little different. It's just a cool bike. If I could change one thing, I'd love there to be a little more flex in the rear end, just a little. A little bit stiff for my liking. But that stiffness is what makes it so great at acceleration and technical moves. So maybe I'd be missing that if we went softer. Sometimes I overemphasize how compliant a frame is. It really depends on where you're riding. And I work a lot of that out in my bike consultation service. If your trails are buff with no rocks and no square edges, you can handle a stiffer frame much better than I can here in the land of cinder blocks. What a bike, Starling, well done. Still, one of these days I'm gonna ride a little VDI over on my other channel, Big Brain Party. I'm gonna see how that single pivot, single speed, full suspension feels. Oh, I love the way that manual. Woo this bike has so much pop. I don't think I've ever ridden another hardtail with this much pop. Something about the mullet and where the wheel is in relationship to the cranks is unreal. Normally I have to pull pretty hard to get a good pop. I find myself over pulling on this and as I hold back, it kind of pops itself. Wow, this would be a fun Bentonville bike. And you can build this up 120 to 160 mil travel. You can get as crazy as you want up front. I like it at 140. I think I'd like it at 130 too. I think 160 would be a little much for me, but some people really like that. Come on through. You're welcome. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Oh man, I'm so lucky to be able to ride so many amazing hardtails in this amazing place. Thank you all for supporting me. I've got links below from my amazing partners. And when you shop through those links, it doesn't cost you any money. In fact, a lot of those links save you 5, 10, 20, 30% on products like eyewear, cranks, gloves, apparel. Right now I'm not healthy enough to make videos as often as I'd like and every little bit helps. So if you're shopping at Jensen, use my link below. It won't cost you anything extra, but it'll make a difference for me. Anyway, thanks for being awesome. We have the best community in Hardtail Party. And if you haven't heard yet, I've got a new channel called Big Brain Party. We'd love to have you over there. It's an educational channel that talks about why bikes ride the way they do. We talk with designers, engineers, people that have big brains in the industry and we get to learn the why behind this awesome sport we do tests experiments if that sounds exciting to you please go subscribe over there i'm going to be doing more full suspension stuff over there as well i'd love to see you over there this bike is so special the guys at starling really know how to tweak the geometry to get the most out of it. There's so much special stuff going on here and it's so much more than it looks like on paper. I'm not affiliated with Starling. This video is not sponsored. They didn't pay me. I'm not making any money. I'm sharing my genuine feelings about this. Who's this bike for? I think this bike is for advanced riders who really know how to make the bike respond the way they want, who are actively engaged in the trail and looking at every bump and nuance and where am I gonna pump and where am I gonna boost. It's for people that when they see a little four inch log in the trail, they're boosting off of it instead of just, just rolling over it. It's for people that 
have a little bit of ADHD and want to play and awaken the inner kid inside of them. I'm really surprised how well balanced this is. On paper, it looked really slack. It looked really like it would really only come alive on black diamonds and double black diamonds, but I'm surprised how good it was even on greens and blues. It's an extremely versatile bike. It wouldn't be my choice for a 10 day bike packing trip, though it could do that no problem. Wouldn't be my choice for XC riding. It wouldn't be my choice for a 10 hour ride, but it'd do it. But this is one of the most versatile hardtails I've ridden that's up for whatever. If you were going on a road trip and you never knew what kind of trails you'd encounter, this bike would be up for whatever you throw at it. What a special bike. Way to go, Starling. If you guys are interested in picking my brain on the perfect bike for you, whether it's hardtail or full suspension, become a patron today. That's how I support my family. That's my full-time job is bike consultation. Or if you need help uh, knowing which fork to upgrade or you're going to get new brakes or new cranks or whatever, I do that over on Patreon. I love helping people sort through marketing mumbo jumbo and just get down to what makes a difference and what doesn't. Thanks for watching everybody. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.